G'day guys. Uh, wrong camera. G'day guys. We're Ocean Grove and uh, we just signed to UNFD and uh, we've got some cool things coming up. Re-releasing our record and stuff and yeah, passed on to D man. Yeah, for one, we have gear now that we bring to shows. We did. I, I don't think I had a. I reckon I had a guitar only for about the first year and a half. You still do not own all your. <laughs> Pretty much everything I've got's either borrowed or lended. Yeah. So. I had, I had a wireless once. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess gear-wise we've improved a bit, but band-wise we've had a few changes. I think Sam's our third or fourth drummer. Yeah, I guess, yeah. He's on the back line. On the back line. Um, but yeah, so we've had a few changes in drummers. Uh, Matt's our second guitarist. Um, obviously, our previous guitarist, also named Matt, um, is still kind of with us and um, a lot behind the scenes. But in terms of, yeah, sort of group-wise, that's kind of all the changes that's happened. Um, Music-wise, I'd say, yeah, there's been a pretty stark sort of change in the direction that we've kind of taken our sound. Um, Outsider was a lot different to, you know, our latest release, Black Label, and I think back then we didn't really know what we were sort of doing with our sound. We were kind of just writing music that felt like it fit fit in with the time and weren't really exploring with, you know, and experimenting with what, what we could really do with our, with our talent. So um, I think now, yeah, we're very much more kind of embedded in sort of where we're headed with the music and really can see where the future's heading, so... Yeah. Well, I think that we, when we made that swap, um, Matt was DJing at the time, and it was, it was sort of... comes back to this thing and the mantra of way that we approach the band. It's like, it's 100% in with all your passion, or, you know, it's there's no point doing it at all. And... Um, he needed to go away and DJ with like Will Sparks and all these people and that was great for him and we were happy but you know it was this thing where we can't keep on chopping and changing and having different things so we got Matt in and Matt was already coming to the shows and he was already there. He, he was there every show we were playing, he was just immediately to the right making sure that Cop you know had his like amp turned on and his guitar like his strings were like actually you know on the guitar and stuff like that because Matt's a, the other Matt um, who's not in the band uh, performing anymore? He's a he's a great musician, but like he was wayward, like with his, all his gear and stuff like that. So that that was the easy transition, and I guess it, it's good because you can go away and have a third person perspective of him coming in and writing music. And I mean, we don't listen to heavy music all that much anymore, but he has no scope at all of anything going on in the heavy music world. And that's a, a great thing for us because we can come to him and it's just this really fresh approach that I feel that a lot of people don't have because you can you can just get a bit consumed in it all, especially in the point of like writing music or performing music or approaching it in a way that everyone else is doing. And like if you see something that's successful, I think people, whether they want to or not, will get drawn to that. But with him, it's just like a fresh ideal and he's still a great friend and still writes a lot of the music and stuff, but he... Um, yeah, he, he, it's just it's just the perfect, you know, the perfect setup. I think the main reason for our track listing was sort of to depart from sort of what our sound was, sort of sort of to transition into the newer the newer OG. Um, and yeah, the track listing just sort of worked out better, like. Back. Yeah, that was intentional. That sort of. Yeah, it, it was all it was all intentional to uh, to have sort of the songs which sounded a little bit more similar to what we put out in Outsider, then to sort of fade it in into um, into into the newer stuff, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Twice as many beers to still buzz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say that mostly that, but. I don't know, I guess it, it's it's good to know that they're not sick of us and they're happy to have us on board once more. Um, I, I was saying to Luke, you know, when we sort of first found out about it, it it's it's a, it's a cool thing. We haven't really had it before where, you know, we've 
toured with these bands and then you know gotten to know them worked out their dynamic they've worked out our dynamic and sort of found a middle ground and that really works and to be able to back that up with another tour pretty much you know not really long after the first one and really approach day one approach show one being totally comfortable and 100% confident that these guys have our back and that you know we're in an environment that promotes you know just like creativity and just going for it and um, I think that's yeah that's what I'm most excited for is just already being made to all these guys and kind of yeah and knowing that we can do what we do even more so and be confident that we're just going to get away with it because yeah first few days or two every time we kind of got to be a bit um yeah a little, little normal but I think yeah from day one of the Equinox tour I think we're just going to sort of go <laughs> all guns blazing. I guess it's like, yeah, it's a tie-in with the Black Label characters and like this this character Donny, we have like a an idea of who he is and what he means and he's in the music videos and it's a very much part of the storyline if you listen to the sort of the music and everything and he's this character, you know, um, yeah, he, he's a strange guy, Donny, um, but for this one it was sort of like a, his tamed henchman. Uh, he's a bit more foolish and a bit more of a jester and we just thought because it was a fun day and everyone was like uh, gonna have a good time we thought we'd have sort of like a, a tame gesture of a guy and he like I don't know you probably be rolling some footage now but like he sort of got up on stage and had a disc on him and put it in and like yeah he was just like he's just a party starter which is pretty much who uh, it's it was Squilkiss doing it but he's um yeah he's the party starter pretty much all we need to say about that one. I'd say it's odd. Odd, experimental, odd world. Odd world music. I think they're the key adjectives, but I mean, that, that in itself, yeah, is, is really, I guess, not really giving away much either. But I mean, it, it's, in its own right, it's sort of, I guess, energetic. It's sort of, fast paced most of it mostly but yeah but I think we kind of leave it that we don't try and sort of go oh, we need to be able to describe this it's sort of just yeah just listen to it instead and kind of just take what you want from it I think we're done <laughs> I think we've reached the bottom of the barrel Do we get big balls on if, if anyone has big balls get it on because we're going to sing that for the outro <laughs> I need to get in there too. Yeah. Well, I'm a upper, upper class. High society. God's gift to all. Notoriety. And I always fill my own. <laughs> the social pages say I've got the biggest balls of all. And he's got big balls, and she's got big balls. And we've got the biggest balls of them all!